get a bit more water. It's just been a little while, right? Backwash, so 180 degrees. Yep. All right, and then hit run. So it ramps up. There we go. You hear that noise? So the water is then going through here. This is the normal recirculation, but the water goes out here for the backwash. All right. So that goes down there. So we're doing a really good backwash right now. There's a sight glass right here. Yep. <laughs> and it's not looking too bad right now. It's fairly clean. You can see your finger behind it. See that? Yep. So that's pretty good. So we do a backwash. Don't do it for too long. Especially because she told us that the automatic water top up isn't working right now, right? Okay. All right, so go down, turn it off. You go to rinse and rinse for, uh, you only really have to rinse for about 10, 15 seconds. It's just gonna rinse the, the media bed. So it ramps up. So that's still water going through there, but it's bypassing. That's really it. So always turn it off when you turn the, the lever, okay? And then you fire it back on again. So that's back into, fil into filter mode. And then it ramps up. So again, it's a three-speed pump. And I'll see if we can do it. This is, I'll see if this is the maximum speed. Yeah, that's the maximum speed. <laughs> speed one. All right, so now we're pumping it through. How's this looking? Look for that sign of white. You can see that's pumping in some good chlorine right now. There's not really the sign of uh, crystallization on the plates, right? If, if it was that white crystallization on the plates of the cell, this is called a, the salt cell, all right? Then what we would do is we would unscrew this, just like we did on your pool. Uh, after turning off the system, obviously, and dip it in a concentration of 10% uh, acid, 90% water. All right. So right now that's going back. Um, you got the pool return and the spa return. So the So yeah, it's indicating EEO3, which is water flow failure. So that's either not enough flow or the flow is going the opposite direction. Um, we can quickly check which way the flow is going. <clears throat> right now, the flow is coming from the filter and then going through the heat pump. Right, so um, it should say in, water in at the bottom. So it's going the right direction because it's coming out of here. So it's, it's obviously not enough flow. Now, I don't know how old that pump is, but it could use a little bit of a service. Um, in order to service it, you take out these bolts right here when you disconnect it. Same thing as I was telling you about, and check the impeller. There'd be a big, great big O-ring in there. Uh, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be too hard, but we could, because uh, it's probably just chalked up with something. Okay. So what we can do, we can turn this off in the meantime. So right now I've directed all the flow towards that. Yeah, I put all the flow through here right now. But EEO3, it's just not getting enough. And we're just gonna hold it for a couple seconds. Well, uh, we might have to put a hose in this. Okay. We'll see. At least for now, you can give that a really good cleaning. While we're doing that, so that's open to there, closed to there. Let's turn it back on again. There's one more thing I want to check. 
I just want to make sure we can get prime it first. So part of your daily uh, maintenance would be to come in here and do a backwash like we, like I showed you. Yep. I can uh, just remember to turn off the pump each time okay, to do the backwash. Um, that's really important. Um, but once a year, they should be doing a, a media replacement of the first little bit of sand here. And that could be what's restricting the flow. So what we're going to do now, now that it's kind of primed up, we're going to turn it off. I'm going to put it here to recirculate. So recirculate is going to bypass um, the filter media bed. We're going to ramp this up again. We're going to turn this back on and see if we're getting enough flow. So uh, if all of a sudden this is turning on and we're getting enough flow, See, we should be getting heaps of flow. Look at that uh, flow cell. There's heaps going through there. I don't see why you should get no flow now. So, this is on heat. Just give it a minute. Let's we'll see if we get the no flow. Right now we're directing it back to the spa. Let's heat it up. Okay. Pollen test kit. Done. All right, with your water sample. Your sample jar. You wanna go about elbow deep. sample from there okay and then from here make sure your test tubes are nice and clean so I'll grab two of them to start with nice and clean okay get out your trusty syringe a little bit of a clean okay Draw up from there, and you fill to the 10 mil mark. Okay, just like that. So we'll test for pH first, which is your phenol red. So let's see, do I have one already? If not, it's just right here, phenol red. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in here before putting this, the tablet in. Hit the power button. Okay, it's already on phenol red, so we hit okay. Insert blank, so that's what we've done. Put the cover on, because it's not gonna give you a very good test with the sunlight coming in. It needs to be dark. It's blanking. Insert sample. Crush in the sample without touching it with your hands. There we go. And it's already an orangey color, which isn't too bad, actually. Oh no, it's actually turning kind of pink, which usually indicates that the pH is pretty high and that we gotta add acid to bring it down. So see how that's a nice pink color? Clint, when we did your pool yesterday, that was orange, right? 
Sample goes in. Hit OK. Above. All right, so what that arrow means is above. <clears throat> That's not a good sign. So that means that your pH right now is over 10 parts per million. We got to bring that down to between 7.4 and 7.6. All right, so in order to do that, we got to add acid. And there's usually instructions written on it as to how much you put in to bring it down. It's not on this one, but I remember from yours, it was uh, about a similar size pool and it was 150 milliliters to bring it down 0.1 parts per million. So we're gonna have to bring it down quite Get a nice flow. You know what I mean? Don't have that clunky flow yep. where it's just splashing everywhere because it's also shooting out air. All right, that's probably good enough. All right, I might just get a bit more water because it's been a little while, right? All right. So, for the chlorine, Take that out. Okay. Here we go. Turn on the machine. These are cleaner test tubes. We'll go up to free chlorine right here hit okay insert blank we just did now you want your dpd1 tablet for the chlorine sample these ones are a bit hard i don't know i think it's gonna be it's gonna be fun here <laughs> chlorine it's a good sign that it's pink uh, ph it's a good sign that it's orange so what you gotta do with this now is crush that tablet at the bottom. These tablets are a little bit older, so they're a little bit tougher to crush, but it's getting there. You want that to be nice and diluted um, before putting it in the machine. Good. Insert sample, cover it up. 7.6, which is still okay. I mean, um, really people shouldn't be swimming in it if it's over 10, right? And uh, like we talked about before, if it's over 16, that's really when you're shocking it. And um, you know, that's, that's when you're getting rid of your chloramines. So 7.6 is good for now, we know we got a lot of chlorine, we don't need to check the, uh, oh, the salt cell. Okay, so what we might do is just another pH test and see if what we did had an effect. So again, you don't have to do this each time, it's just that things are constantly changing while we're doing this, so. Might as well get the freshest sample. Okay. We're gonna go down to phenol red. Boom. Insert the sample. One. Phenol red. It's turning orange, right? Still a bit pink. Actually, it's still very pink. Just gotta put a bit more in. We didn't know how far above 10 it was, right? 
which means this water is very, very, very basic, which means the chlorine is not doing a whole heck of a lot. It's still over, so we still gotta put more in. Because really that chlorine's not gonna do a whole heck of a lot, right? If it's insert sample. Okay, it's a lot of undissolved in there. There we go, that shouldn't make too much of a difference. All right, alkalinity. One fifty-five, so your alkalinity is actually pretty good. That really should be over a hundred. Okay, um, very bare minimum over eighty. Mm, it's still kind of pink, but it's not as pink as it was, I don't think. See if we're making a difference, all right? That's looking a little bit orangier, right? Uh, now we're gonna have to blank again. Do, do, do. Watch this, we're gonna get a reading now. 7.8, man, I'm good. We're getting there. Just about there, right? I'd even put in just a tiny bit more acid and you were golden. So you really wanna get that below 7.6. Between 7.4 and 7.6. So really this is just gonna be a tiny bit more and we can have some nice healthy water with chlorine doing what it should be doing. Okay, very happy with that. All right, clean the dolphin. Robotic cleaner. All you do is you take this up. There's little cartridges on the inside. These things just easily snap into the middle. And then it opens up. Upside. And clean out that compartment as best you can. Put it all back together. Turn these things back into position. And just remember that the slotted side goes on the slide with a notch. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. There it is.